joining us here this um, awesome streaming session that Steve and I are doing. I'm Dan Dinley, founder of Guitar Zoom, and this is my sidekick, Steve Stein, who needs no introduction, especially if you're watching this on YouTube, um, or wherever you're tuning into us, whatever channel you happen to be on, uh, how you're watching this, whether it's, I don't know, whatever, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever the possibilities are out there. Thank you for being here. Um, we are doing, this is part three of a music theory workshop. And this is hopefully something that um, you guys are getting a lot of benefit out of. The first two went really, really well. They will be on YouTube for you. You can go there and check it out. We'll create a playlist for you. You can go through everything step by step. If you want to learn music theory fundamentals, then keep watching. If you want to learn it even faster, go to guitarzoom.com and check out Steve's music theory masterclass which takes all this stuff from step one all the way through. And um, that's available for you there on the old guitarzoom.com. Steve, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you very Appreciate much. It, buddy. I'm really excited about this. Um, guys, if you have questions, please put them in your comments. We'll try to read those and answer them as we go here. And also uh, in a future session, please uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed and uh, turn on notifications so you can get the notice of the next time we're gonna be streaming this next, the next part of this. I'm gonna cover a lot of stuff. Um, I just wanna warn you that if you are just starting out, like you're just trying to figure out where to put your fingers on the guitar, you're a total newbie, don't worry. This is not going to be applicable to you. Just go, um, go, go you're welcome to stay, but don't feel overwhelmed. Also, if you're, if you're not a newbie and you've been playing a while and you still feel overwhelmed, also don't worry because <laughs> it takes a while to get your head wrapped around all this. Can you hear me okay, Steve? Yeah, you're, you're fading in and out. Oh, am I? Yeah. Hang on a second. Had my heater on back here because it was cold. Maybe oh, the, sure. Is that better or not? Uh, just speak a little bit louder if you can. Yeah. Let me turn up my gain, sir. You want loud? Yeah. I'll give you loud. That's <laughs> two. How does that sound? Can that's you hear good. me better? Yeah, better? That's good. Okay. Okay. And so, um, look, guys, don't get overwhelmed with this. It's something that has taken me and Steve years and years and years to learn and to absorb and to be able to apply. Just stay the course. Don't get discouraged. Hang in there and uh, stay with us for the workshop. And if you want the master class, that thing is available for you there at Guitar Zoom. Okay. Thank you. All right, Steve, take it away. Okay. So again, if you haven't seen the first couple of videos that Dan and I have done, I would strongly recommend that you go back and watch those. You don't have to go back and watch them right now, but they're going to help if, if there's any, you know, I find a lot that, that people are just missing little components. Like they, mm -hmm. they might have the bigger picture. There's just something that's missing. This so in the first video we talked about, well, the first lesson we talked about um, chromatic scale and all the notes in music and that, and then we, we morphed that in the second video into the major scale and understanding how the major scale is constructed and how the major scale is movable from the key of C to the key of G, and it still sounds like Dorian and Fasolati Do wherever you go. Well, now what we're going to do, this is from the last video, we're going to take this key of C, and again, we could use any, any key, but we're just going to use key of C, again, because it has no sharps and flats, so it makes it a little easier. And what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these seven different notes and we're going to create seven different chords from each one of those notes. Mm. And then we're going to take those chords and we're going to apply them to your guitar. And then once we learn how to do that, you can actually do this in any key you want as well. Um, so it's not just the key of C. You're going to learn the theory behind it and actually put it on your guitar and play it wherever you want. Very cool. Yeah. This is going to be exciting. So guys, chords and scales are like this, interlinked, can't be separated, can't really fully understand one without the other. That's right. They are totally related, and uh, I think a lot of guitar players think of them as separate things, but chords come directly from scales. They're just That's notes right. plucked out of the scale. So That's right. And, and the thing to understand, as we've been talking about, is music theory is fundamentally based off what we call the major scale, the diatonic scale. And so even though you might play music that's more based off minor or you do blues a lot and you play a lot of minor pentatonic or something like that, the construction and the logic behind everything that you're doing is still based off that major scale uh, that we talked about yesterday. So as we construct these chords, 
they're going to be constructed off of these seven different notes. Okay, again, um, any key, you could use the key of G, you could use the key of A, you could use the key of D, and it's all going to work the same way. I'm going to give you the formula, and then you can, and I'm going to show you how to do it on the guitar, and then you can move it wherever you want. So the thing we have to understand is we've been talking about how this scale, this major scale, was built on a series of half steps and whole steps, which we refer to as the distance between notes or intervals. Okay, the distance between two notes is called an interval. So we learned, for instance, C to D was a whole step, and D to E was a whole step, but E to F was only a half step. Okay, and again, if you're confused about any of those terms, I would highly recommend that you go back and watch uh, the early videos that Dan and I did because we talk about all that stuff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start off by understanding that if we are in the key of C, the first note, which is C, we refer to as the root. Okay, the first note of the key of G, the G is the root of the, the scale or the key. Okay, if you're in the key of A, A is the root, and then we're going to have other notes. Okay, so yeah, it is the one, no doubt about it. It's absolutely the one, but we refer to it as the root. Okay, so the next note is a two, obviously, and the next note's the third note, and the fourth note, and the fifth note, and the sixth note, and the seventh note. And I think, yeah, tomorrow we're going to be talking about intervals. So you're going to learn all about intervals. Now today I'm going to touch on it a little bit and get you prepared for it, but tomorrow we're going to open the door on that whole thing and talk all about it. So what we want to do is understand that a chord, what is a chord? Well, a chord is a bunch of notes played at the same time. If you go to the piano and you do this, you're playing different notes. If you go to the piano and you do this, you're playing a horrible sounding chord, but you're playing a chord, okay? All those notes are, are ringing out at the same time. Now when we first start learning about chords in a key, the key of C, for instance, we want to build a C chord of some kind, and a D chord of some kind, and an E chord of some kind, and so on. So we start building these chords. Hopefully you can see that on the... Actually, I'm going to write it a little bit down here so you can see it. Okay? Uh, this is the word we're using, if I could spell it right. Triad. Okay? Triad. Mm -hmm. So, tri meaning three. The chords that we are going to build today are called triads. They're based off three different notes. Okay? So, we're going to take these notes right here, the C, or excuse me, the C, the D, the E, the F, G. We're going to build chords on all of those. So, let me get this out of the way. So, in order to build triads, what we're going to do is we're going to select certain notes out of these, uh, these seven notes to build each triad. And what we're going to do is we're going to use what we refer to as the root the third note, and the fifth note, okay? So right here, just over on the side here, I'm going to write root, third, and fifth. So for and you instance, should memorize that, guys. Yep. Root, third, fifth. That's right. So if I wanted to build a C chord, like you played a C chord on the guitar probably, right? I'm going to, the C chord is built off the note C, obviously, and it seems obvious, and oftentimes we think we're not supposed to say that. We have to say that. So if we're talking about a C chord, one of the notes of that C chord emphatically is the C. The next note is going to be the third. Now, what is a third? Well, if we go one, two, three, if we go three notes over, we get E. And the fifth, we'd have to go from that same note, one, two, three, four, five. So notice how I'm building down this way. I want you to see it this direction. So if I was playing the C chord on the guitar, this note right here, this fifth string right here, this note is C. This note right here of the C chord is E. And this third string, which is open when I strum this, is G. When I play a C chord, I'm playing the notes C, E, G. And then on the guitar itself, this note's actually C all over again, and this note's E all over again. So oftentimes when we play guitar chords, we're playing multiple octaves. So we're playing C, E, G, and then we're playing another C and another E, right? And oftentimes when we play chords, we're just doubling those notes over and over and over. We're playing those same notes, okay? A G chord right here, this is a typical G. I've got G, B, D, G, I'll play it that way. B and D. Okay? Mm -hmm. G, 
sorry, B, and then I got G on the bottom, I'm sorry. So the point I wanted to show you with this is, is that I'm actually playing three Gs in this. There's three octaves of Gs in this one chord. Mm -hmm. So uh, we get used to as guitar players playing all these different strings, which seems like we have a lot more notes, but we really don't. We're just playing those same notes over and over and over. Okay. So yeah, so the triad guys is only going to have three distinct notes try like a tricycle has three wheels a triangle has three sides a triad is going to have three notes and what steve is saying is that those notes may repeat at different octaves which just means it's the same note played in a different place but the only notes that you're actually playing if you break it down like to the lowest common denominator it's c e and g for that c triad that's right. Now, that's C chord. chords can have more than three notes. But if we don't learn how to do it with three notes, we can't learn to add four and five and six notes. So right. we have, this, this is the, the, the basics of where we need to start, which again is what we're talking about is music theory fundamentals. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going we're gonna to learn all about each one of these, but I just want you to see how this works. So a C chord is comprised of the notes C, E, and G. You just have to bear with me a little bit here. If we look to the next one, if we go to the note D, in the key of C. We go to the note D and we want to build a triad from the D. The D now for the D chord is the root, right? If I want to build the D chord in the key of C, the root of the D chord would be D. Then we go over three, one, two, three, and we get an F. Then we move over five from the D, one, two, three, four, five, and we get an A. Now, when I was younger and I was learning this stuff, I, in my mind, I always thought about it as it's every other note for the first three notes. So I would think in my head, I'd go A, B, C, D, E, A, C, E, or D, E, F, G, A, D, F, A. That's how I think about it in my head. Um, C, D, E, F, G, C, E, G. And that's how I'd come up with every other note for the first three notes, which was the root, the third, and the fifth of each one. Okay, nice. so again, what, whatever works for you for trying to figure these out, because I know even knowing the major scale sometimes is kind of difficult. So you just got to figure out what works for you. So if I keep doing this, and I'm going to kind of fast forward here so I don't take too much of your time, but if I do it from E, if you think about it, I got, a, I got an E, obviously. Then I move over three, one, two, three. That's E to G. And if I go from there, one, two, three, four, five, that's B. Or if you think about it, E, F, G, A, B. E, G, B. Yep. Okay. F would be F, A, and C. F, G, A, B, C. Root, third, fifth. Now watch this so you don't get confused. G would be G, B, and D. G, A, B, C, D. There's not two C's. This C is this C. So don't think that there's two C's. You wouldn't go G, A, B, C, C. You wouldn't do that. You're just going G, A, B, C, D. Because think about it, D, E, F. That would go on to infinity. As much as the instrument that you're playing would go, that would just go on forever. Mm -hmm. Right? So a piano, that these would go on until the 88 keys has run out. Right? So that's just going to keep going. So G, A, B, C, D. G, B, D. A, C, E, B, D, F. Okay? Again, every other note for the first three notes, root, third, fifth, whatever it is that you need to think of, but you can see the pattern happening. C, E, G. We're skipping a note in between each one of those each time. Okay, so now we're not done, but we've built triads for each one of these chords. Now, we have to understand something about this. This isn't... This is good information, but it doesn't really tell us anything. Right. And if you guys are just joining us, uh, we're, we're doing this blues. I'm oh, sorry, not blues. <laughs> We've been on such a blues kick lately. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're doing the music theory workshop. So um, look, don't worry if you're kind of lost. If you're just joining us. It's okay. Hop in. Get your head wrapped around it as best you can. There's some other videos that we're going to put in this series. You can go back and watch on the YouTube channel. Uh, that's Steve Stein channel or the Guitar Zoom channel on uh, YouTube. You can check those out. We'll create a playlist for you. Um, if you want to get the entire masterclass, that's available for you at guitarzoom.com. It's called Music Theory 
masterclass where we go all of this super in depth. And if you have questions, please post them in the comments. And um, yeah, just want to get that out there, Steve, in case people were just joining us. Go ahead, buddy. And thank you for being here, all of you. Okay, so, so if we look at this now, again, we've got to talk about distance or intervals. Now, we're not going to get super deep into this because tomorrow we're going, to, we're going to move into this. But we do have to understand that C to E is a distance or an interval. E to G is a distance or an interval. Now, we know that C to E, okay, we have the root, we have the third and the fifth, right? That's what we're calling these things. But let's actually look at the distance here. So C is what we call, okay, C to E right here is a third from each other, one, two, three. E to G is a third from each other, one, two, three, right? C to G is a fifth from each other. So if we think about all the possibilities of distances, C to E is a third, E to G is a third, right? And C to G is a fifth. Just so you kind of understand, all of these chords have that relationship. They have thirds and they have a fifth from D to, or C to G or D to A or E to G or F to C, right? So just so you kind of understand that, again, we're going to get deeper into this tomorrow, but we need to understand some basics right now. So let's go back to our old way of thinking of whole steps and half steps, right? That's how we built our, our key. So if we were to look at the distance from C to E right here, Okay, C to D is a, is a whole step. D to E is a whole step. So C to E is two whole steps, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this right here is two whole steps. Let me turn this on so you can see it better. So this is two whole steps. Okay? Mm -hmm. C to E is two whole steps. E to G... Let's look at that. E to G. So E to F, is that a whole step? No, it's only a half step, remember? And this again is why our last lesson, it's really important to have listened to that. So E to F is a half step. F to G is a whole step, but E to G is only one and a half steps because this is only a half step right here. So this distance, I'm gonna erase this so we got a little more room here. is one and a half steps. So, C to E is a third. E to G is a third. But they're not the same thirds. They're not the same sizes. We refer to the one that's two whole steps, we refer to that as a major third. And the one and a half steps we refer to as a minor third because they're two different sizes so we have to give them two different names so c to e is two whole steps it's a major third e to g is only a step and a half so it's a minor third so you have the choice of either thinking about this as two over one and a half or thinking about it as i'm going to write it like this major third over minor third you can think about it either way, okay? Preferably as you keep going, you're gonna to wanna to think about it as a major third over a minor third. So here's the equation. If you wind up with a triad that is a major third on top of a minor third, you wind up with a major chord. That's the definition of a major chord, is it's a major third on top of a minor third. So this you guys can think about these as building blocks. We're laying the building blocks. Like how do you build um, a brick house? So you have to stack the bricks on top of each other. We're like, how do you build a major chord? You have to stack a major third and a minor third together. That will give you a major chord. Right. That's right. And, and the thing is, is you can have a lot of questions like, well, what if you did this or what? And those are all valid questions. But before you even ask those questions, you need to start with square number one. You need to start with brick number one, which is what we're doing right now. Right. Because asking, well, what happens if you do this? Those are all valid questions. But if we don't understand what we're doing here, you're just going to wind up lost again. Okay. Right. So this first chord 
is two over one and a half or major third over minor third, which gives us a major chord. And we write a major chord with a large Roman numeral number one. In music, we use Roman numerals because oftentimes when we're talking to other musicians, I might say to somebody, hey, can you play me a one, two, three chord progression? Which is telling them to play these three chords, one, two, and three. But I didn't tell them what key it's in. Why? Well, it depends on who's singing. If it's my older brother who's six foot five singing, he might be in a lower key. If it's a girl that's singing, or somebody my size who's got a higher pitch voice like I do, I might be singing in a higher key. That doesn't change the fact that the song is a one, two, three chord progression. It just depends on are we in the key of C, are we in the key of A, or are we in the key of D? You see, that's the power of music theory. So now we know that in the key of C major, the first chord is C major, which seems logical because that makes sense, right? I mean, if we're in the key of C major, the first chord should be major, right? But now we know why. Okay, now we're going to keep going. Let's look at the second chord. And again, and, and, and just know, so I, everybody understands, why is it major? Because it's a major third plus a minor third. The major third on top of a minor third. Yeah. Two over one and a half. And if that is change, the formula. And if you change that, just to address the whole like, well, what ifs, if you change that formula, it's going to change the chord sound. Right. Well, and we're going to figure that out right now. Right. I, I'm just saying there's other formulas, but this is the one for the major one. That's right. Absolutely. So now if we look at the second chord here, and again, it's getting, a, I should have written this out a little bit smaller, but, um, <laughs> but if I look at D to F, and again, you'll see I have my little arrow there. If I look at D to F, it's a third. If I look at F to A, it's a third. Okay. But let's figure out the actual distance. D to F, D to F. It's a whole step and a half step. So it's one and a half. It's one and a half. F to A is whole step, whole step. It's two. So now you're going to notice that it's flipped over. The one and a half, the little one's on top and the two is on the bottom. The minor third is on top and the, the major third is on the bottom. And when that happens, you wind up with a minor chord. A minor chord is minor third on top with major third on the bottom. And that's why I used a lowercase Roman numeral two, guys. That's right. So big, big Roman numeral is major. Little Roman numeral is minor. Okay. And that now, one represents the first chord built in that scale, and the two is the second chord of that scale. That's why it's called the one chord, the two chord. C major, D minor. Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the thing that you really need to understand. We're going to keep going, but the mathematics, and this is why people go, oh, you know, music is related to math. It's this sort of thing. Because the logic is ironclad. If our major scale from yesterday is built off the same series of half steps and whole steps. Remember I told you half steps between three and four and seven and eight. If all of our major scales, the key of G and the key of D and the key of A and the key of A, if they all have the same schematic on top, they're all gonna get the same schematic on the bottom. So if you're in the key of G major, your first chord is major and your second chord is gonna be minor. If you're in the key of D, the first chord is gonna be major and the second chord is gonna be minor. This whole thing crumbles if this isn't right. Mm -hmm. So it's imperative that this is right when you start building this out. So let's take a look at the next one. We have E, G, and B. E to G. Think to yourself, is that two whole steps or a major third? Or is it one and a half steps, which is a minor third? Okay. Think about that, guys. E to F is what? A half step or a whole step? That's a half step. So E to F is a half step. So you automatically know that's not going to be a major third because you have to have two whole steps to be a major third. So that's E right. to F is a half step. F to G is a whole step. Right. That's one and a half. That's one and a half. 
and what we call one and a half is a minor third. Well, we know it's on top now, right? Right here, minor third, and mm -hmm. then g to b, g to b, g to a is a whole step, a to b is a whole step, so that's two. So that's one and a half over two, or minor third over major third, which I have written right over here that you can kind of see, okay? Right here, minor third to major third. So it's the third chord, so I'm gonna write it as a Roman numeral three, and it's gonna be a small Roman numeral three, which stands for minor. So now I know that my key of C has C major, D minor, and E minor. And if guys, this is, key, so go ahead, buddy. Oh, Didn't sorry, interrupt you. if I was in the key of G, and I knew my notes for G, which if you were with me yesterday or with us yesterday, you know I, I did the key of G, but if we just think, the first note in G is G, so that's major. So it would get a G major chord. The second note is A, so it'd be A minor. The third note in the key of G, G, A, B, would be B minor. You see, this quality stays the same for every key. So you're now learning that in a major key, the first chord is always major. The second chord is always minor. The third chord is always minor. So there's a little bit of a shortcut there I'm not saying that you shouldn't know these things, because of course you should, but there's a lot of times when you're trying to figure out songs by ear and you go, oh, I think it's in the key of G, but what are the other chords? Well, this is where this comes in handy because you can think to yourself, well, what chords are in the key of G? Well, I know the one chord is major, the two chord is minor, and the three chord is minor. Because this mathematical equation is the same for every key, the outcome is going to be the same for every key. And I just wanted to say that if you're sitting there thinking, or if you've ever heard guys, um, someone say, what's, you know, like play a one, four, five chord progression. That's what they're referring to right there on his whiteboard is those Roman numerals. What they're saying is a one, four, five chord progression. We haven't gotten to four or five yet, but I'm just saying that's where we're going with this. So if you stick with us, you're going to, the light bulb's going to come on for you. You're going to see when people use that terminology, one, four, and five, exactly what that means, or if they say right. play one. That's right, and the reason we're using that term is because the key is irrelevant. What key right. do you want it in? One, four, five, and what? The key right. of G, the key of D, the key of A, it's fine. You throw it in whatever key you want. All I mean, right. as guitar players, we're really only limited by our knowledge. But a vocalist is limited by their vocal range. They can only sing so high and so low and there's got to be somewhere in between that highness and lowness that's comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. yeah, a guitar player, we're, we're only, I, I'm limited to, by what I don't know, right? But that's something I can learn and I can, I can get better at. A singer has a limitation. At least most singers do anyway. So, so our they job is, is to find the key that that singer is most comfortable in and make music in that key. So sure, the original version of Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison might have been in the key of G, and it is. But if somebody else is singing that song and you're in a band with that person and that person doesn't sing as low as Van Morrison, you can't force them to sing in the key of G if it's not comfortable for them. So you take that chord progression that the song is based off of, which Brown Eyed Girl is 145. And you move it into whatever key is comfortable for that. And we call that transposition, but let's, let's finish up this first here. So... Mm -hmm. We look at the next chord, we have F, A, and C. So again, same principle, F to A. Is that two whole steps or a major third? Or is it one and a half steps or a minor third? And the answer is, it's two. I know my board's a mess, but you can follow me as best I can. I can always rewrite this, but... Um, it's two whole steps. Yep, yeah, which is a major third. And then if we look at A to C, How far is that? Think A to B, B to C. How far is that? And your answer should be one and a half because this is a whole step, but this is only a half step, and we know that, right? If you've been with, with us since the beginning, you know my B to E trick, right? So we know that's only a half step. So this is only going to be one and a half. So two over one and a half is the major third over a minor third. Whenever the big one's on top, it's major. Whenever the little one's on, on top, it's minor. That's great. I love that. That's what it is. Major thirds on the top. It's a major chord. In fact, that major, that major, uh, yeah, never mind. I won't get into that. Okay. Guys, if you're just now starting, um, or if you're just joining us, guys, we're in the middle of the music theory workshop. 
Thank you so much for being here. Put your comments in and we'll try to answer your questions. Uh, subscribe and make sure you turn on the notification to get the next notification of the next section or session of the old music theory workshop. And if you are digging on this and you want to really go deep into it and get the whole thing step by step, uh, go to Guitar Zoom and enroll in Steve's guitar, or sorry, music theory masterclass. You can just click on the word masterclass at guitarzoom.com. It'll take you there. Okay, so the next one we've got, again, G to B and B to D. I'm just making room. I just got that out of there so you could kind of see this better, but G to B. So again, after you get comfortable with this whole step, half step stuff that we've been telling you since the first video, it, this all gets easier because you don't have to count it all the time. You get used to going, oh, G to A is a whole step. A to B is a whole step. I know because it's not B to C and E to F. You get used to thinking about that, okay? So, um, so G to B is two or a major third. So again, you already have your answer, but we'll keep going here. B to D is only one and a half. Major third over minor third. So our five chord is major as well. And this was what was Dan, Dan just said. The one, four, five, which we're gonna to get to later in another video, we're gonna talk even more about this too. But the one, four, five is the single most used common chord progression in popular music. It just mm -hmm. is. And now you're seeing why, because it's all three major chords. They're, they're all major chords. Think about if you've ever played A, D, and E in a song, or G, C, and D in a song, or C, F, and G in a song, or D, G, and A in a song. Those are all one, four, five, in the respective key, you think about it. A, B, C, D, E, A, D, E, one, four, five. Uh, key of D, D, E, F, G, A, D, G, A, one, four, five, right? One, four, five, there, it's the most common chord progression that we use, so there it is sitting right there. They're the three major chords. Now, if we keep going, if we go to the next chord, which is A here. Really wish I would have written this different, but we're just going to keep trudging through my mess. That's yeah, fine, man. So A, C, and C, and E. Okay. So A to C, you have to ask yourself: Is it a major third or a minor third? And your uh, and the answer is: How do they know? Well, you got to count the distance: A to B, B to C. A to B is a whole step. B to C is a half step. And if you're asking yourself at all, I don't know what a whole step and a half step is, that's why you have to go back to, otherwise this video would be five hours long because we'd be recapping everything else that we did. <laughs> you know, they're all, and that's the whole point is it's, it's got to be built on each other and you have to understand each sequence of events to move on to the next thing. So this one is a minor third. It's one and a half steps. C to E. C to D, D to E. What is that? Is it a minor third or a major third? Your answer should guys. be... Major third. Ding, ding, ding. Major third. C to D is a whole step. D to E is a whole step. Therefore, it is two whole steps or a major third. Okay? So six chord minor is going to be... Major gives us... Minor. Chord. So our six chord is minor. It's kind of hard to write at that lower angle, but we're almost. The cool done. thing about this, guys, is, is it doesn't change in a major key. Like once you get those chords down there, the one, two, four, five, six, they are universal. You don't have to relearn this. It's you got it for one key, you got it for all 12 right. keys. And sometimes your brain's going to go, it shouldn't be that easy. And I always tell people there's so many things about guitar playing that are so easy, they're hard mm -hmm. because we want to make them more difficult. Yeah. As long as your equation is right here, your equation, and again, you have to double, just like mathematics, man. If you make a mistake, the whole thing's going to be wrong, right? Mm -hmm. But as long as your equation here, where the half steps and whole steps are in the right places, and you figure out your root and your third and your fifth, and you figure out these intervals between these notes, this is what you're going to get. Now, again... I'm just telling you, to be honest with you, you wouldn't even have to learn any of this and you could just win with this, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying that it isn't important to know this, it is. But I'm saying the fact that you now know that the one, the four, and the five are major and the two and the three and the sixth are the outcome, those are minor, that's huge. 
Because as you start looking at songs, just look at any song that you're learning right now within reason. Again, don't go to a Slayer tune or a Metallica tune. Go to a Bob Seger tune. Go to a Bob Dylan tune. Go to a, you know, whatever, Hootie and the Blowfish tune. I don't know, just something. And you're going to see this stuff in action. Go to any thing on the popular radio right now that my daughter listens to it's all this it's all this i couldn't name me anything because i don't listen to it but that's that's what it would be so so here's the wrench right here we get to the last one we get to the b okay what's the distance from b to d is it a major third is it two whole steps or is it a minor third only a step and a half and again, so B to C would be a half step. C to D is a whole step. Right. So it's a step and a half. Step and a half. It's a minor third. D to F. What is that? D to F. D to E is a whole step. E to F is a half step. So this crazy chord you here. blew up my formula, Steve. Yeah. So this crazy <laughs> chord here is both minor thirds okay this chord is very strange it's minor we write it like small like that but we put a little circle behind it at the very end i don't think you're going to be able to see that in my screen nope okay but it's right here okay that chord is what we refer to as diminished it's two stacked minor thirds now to be completely honest with you you're not going to see a diminished chord very often in popular music. And oftentimes, even when you do see it, it's not being used in this fashion. Like for me, I grew up listening to stuff like Ingve Malmsteen, and oftentimes we'd be using di diminished stuff for things that don't fit into this. We're using it for all kinds of different things. So again, you know, the, I always tell people the beauty of rock and roll is that it all doesn't make sense. Theory makes sense. Rock and roll does not all make sense. Okay. That's right. There's rules within rules that don't make any, any sense at all. But my point is, is that that seventh chord right there would be B diminished. That's what it would be. But for you to learn these six, these first six chords, and here's the, the trick that I want you to walk away from, and then I'm going to grab my guitar. We're going to look at this. Okay. Here's the shortcut for you to remember for the rest of your life in a major scale. Because remember, someday we need to learn about minor scales and things like that too, which are really related to this. They're not, when I went to high school, or when I went to college, I thought a minor scale was completely different than this. And I panicked. I almost dropped out of school because I was learning Mozart. <laughs> like, it's like 144 scales. I'm never going to learn all this. I didn't understand that they're actually all just related to the major. If you learn this, you know all the rest of it. You just have to learn how it works. Okay? So, in a major scale, here's the shortcut. One, four, five is always major. And two, three, six is always minor. And if you got that, that'll take you a long way. That's right, because uh, let me see if you, well, you can see it on here. If I wrote the key of G, which you might remember from last week, and don't worry about it if you don't, but G would be G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. If you remember that, we figured out why there was a sharp. So with this logic, even if I didn't know all of this, I'd know my chords are G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, and then F sharp diminished, which I don't really have to worry about. That's so right. if someone said to me, hey, this song's in the key of G, come up and jam Brown Eyed Girl, it's in the key of G. I already know what to expect. That doesn't mean it's always going to be there. Sometimes music throws you for a loop. But most of the time, I know what's happening. And Dan and they I would have are going to, tell to do you a what lesson the... on common chord progressions to help you out with that too. We will. That's yeah. coming up. Yeah. So, so I don't know. He said, come up here and jam, jam the brown eyed girl. It's in the key of G. Now, what he knows is there's seven chords in the key of G. He knows the one's always major, the four's always major, the five's always major, and then G, two. GCD right there. That's what I think in my head. GCD, one, four, yep. five. And the only other part he'd need to know, if he didn't already know, that it's a, a one, four, five in the key of G is able to say, hey, it's in the key of G, it's a one, four, five. Yeah, or even he, if it had other chords. If it had a minor chord, then I know two, three, and six. I got to throw a, an A minor or a B minor or an E minor in there. Yep. And as we keep going, again, we're not going to bury you today, but as we keep going, we're going to figure out that even some of those chords are used more common than others together. Yep. 
So, I mean, there's, there's a logic to all of this. So you have the out answer, the outcome that you can apply to the key of D or as long as you know the key. So we have taught you the chromatic scale, which is all the notes in music. We taught you how to build the major scale and how to build that major scale in any key. If you want to be in the key of G or the key of D or the key of C or the key of A or the key of F, you have that knowledge. You might need a piece of paper to write it down a few times, but you have the knowledge to figure it out. Now you have the knowledge to understand what notes are in each chord in that key. And ultimately, what the chord qualities are, which is even more important, but it didn't come out of my mouth. <laughs> but, for the, right. but for the regular pro player, it is. Because Absolutely. you want to learn how to play by ear. You know, it's like you're learning a song and you go, oh, it so sounds like it's the main chord is kind of A, but I don't know what else is in there. Well, now you do. Mm -hmm. At least you got a fighting chance. It might have something that's outside the box. Music doesn't always make sense, but man, you got a fighting chance to get the right answers. I love it. This is great, man. I mean, just this, this one session right here, if I had known this and I was about 14 years old, it would have completely changed how like clarified for me for years of struggle and, and like, what the heck? Right. Um, and playing chords, I had no idea they were related in the same key, not knowing which scale I could use for a solo, etc. So, guys, I hope that this is resonating with you. Listen, if you're overwhelmed, don't worry about that. It's okay. Just stick with us. So he's going to demonstrate this here on the guitar for you. You can always go back and watch these on YouTube. We will, once they're streamed, they will go on this channel permanently. Uh, we will even put them in a playlist for you. You can go back and watch them. If you want to get the full masterclass, it's called Music Theory Masterclass, and it's available at guitarzoom.com. And I can tell you guys, everybody who's enrolled with that, enrolled in that masterclass has absolutely loved it. And some of, some of the testimonies are like, this changed my life. So uh, if that's what you're interested in, you can check that out. The old guitarzoom.com, just click on the masterclass button. Show us, sir, on your beautiful Martin. Okay, so right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the key of G simply because it pushes me down further on the guitar so it'll be easier for you to see versus playing in the key of C way up here. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play these notes as a major scale. I'm gonna play G, A, B. So notice how I'm putting those three notes on the sixth string. Mm -hmm. So I can see G, A, and B sitting right there on my sixth string, right? Okay, so let's keep going, G, A, B. C, D, E is on the fifth string. So my next three notes symmetrically look exactly the same, and those are sitting on my fifth string. So I have G, A, and B sitting right there, and then I have C, D, and E sitting right there on the next string. You see that? And then I'll round that off by playing F sharp, and then G, and then I'm done with this scale. Now oftentimes you might play it here, which is perfectly fine. I'm playing it in what we refer to as a spread fingering so you can visualize this stuff happening on your guitar. Because I'm gonna take all these chords, I'm gonna play them for you right now just like you can do, okay? So G, A, B, C, D, E, and then F sharp, and then G. So we know that our chords would be G major, A, let me get my guitar out of the way, minor, B, minor, C major, D major, E minor, and then F sharp diminished. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, four, five is always major, two, three, six is always minor, and seven is always diminished. So when I go to my guitar, I can plug it in. I can say G major, A minor, G A B minor, Remember in the first lesson when we learned all our notes on the sixth string? Well, this is coming back to help us. G major, A minor, B minor. Now, of course, I need to know my bar chords, right? And then the next string I have C, D, E. So my third chord is, uh, excuse me, my fourth chord is major, C. My fifth chord is D major. And my sixth chord is minor. So C major, D minor, E minor, excuse me, I'm sorry, C major, A minor, B minor, D major, E major, E minor. Now, watch this though. One, two, three, four, five, 
six. One, four, five are major. Two, three, and six are minor. Ooh, nice. So if I was in the key of F, and I don't know the key of F, I, I haven't studied enough, I don't, ah, right? But here's what I do. I go to F, F, G, A. I play that exact same symmetrical shape. And I plug in my chords. Major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six. One, four, five are major. Two, three, six are minor. That's a great little exercise, guys, that you can practice right there. Yeah, and it's, it's one, four, five, two, that's three, right. six. So I want to show. I always want to show you shortcuts, but that doesn't mean the rest of it isn't important. Obviously, the more you understand about it, the the easier it's going to be to retain all of this information. But this is why, again, as Dan was saying, if somebody said, "Hey, we're playing uh, whatever," and it's a one, six, four, five in the key of G, so then I think in my head, okay, so one, six, four, five which is every doo-wop song ever written. Oh, where, oh, where can my baby be? Right? <laughs> Whatever that is. So, one, six, four, five. Okay, so we start playing that, and the singer goes, oh, no, 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 that's way too low for me. Okay, that's fine. Let's move it up to A. One, six four, five. Even if I'm not thinking about the names of the chords. And in saying that, I feel a little guilty because it's not like you shouldn't know those sorts of things because you should. I'm just saying in the real world, sometimes you got to know this stuff to get, get to the Keep answer. Going. Yeah. You got to get to the right answer. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Dude. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing awful. chunk of, of info. Um, so guys, look, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we're going to be doing some more of these. We're going to go in depth more. Hopefully you will uh, subscribe if you enjoy it. Uh, hit the old notifications button. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you can get notified when we stream these. We're going to do several more, all included in our music theory workshop that we're doing here for you. Where, whatever channel you happen to be watching this on, if it's Steve Stein channel on YouTube, Guitar Zoom on YouTube, Facebook, uh, we can stream there if you're part of the Guitar Zoom community there. Um, wherever you happen to be watching this video, please like it, share it if you found it helpful. Um, make sure you get over there on the old YouTubes though and, and uh, subscribe and hit the notify button so you can get notification of when we're going to be releasing the rest of these because we've got a lot more to come. I'm really, really excited about it. And you guys, if you want to go deep into this, you want to get the full master class, it's available at guitarzoom.com. It's called Music theory masterclass you can just go to the home page and click on masterclass get all the information there super super affordable and unbelievably helpful everybody gets it loves it uh we used to have it as a 12 week masterclass the first time it was released and then we condensed it or not condensed it we actually just took all 12 weeks mashed it into one session so as soon as you you enroll in that you get all 12 weeks you can go exactly to wherever you want um but I would recommend that if you want to get the whole picture of how this thing works, start at the beginning and just work your way through it and stick with it. Don't lose heart. It's uh, music theory is just one of those things that man, once you get, it's like riding a bicycle, you just don't forget it. It's, it is super helpful in so many ways. Steve, this has been awesome, man. I just cannot thank you enough. And I, I cannot thank all of you enough for being here and hanging out with us. Do you have any additional, um, and do you have anything additional you want to say, Steve, or are we, are we done, buddy? No, I think we're good. Just like I said before, watch the other uh, videos that we've done and remember to take your time. As I, I said in the last lesson too, and I'm going to say in this one, don't expect that you're watching this and that you're just absorbing this information through osmosis. You know, you've got to sit, you've got to study this stuff. You've got to think about it. You might even have to crack out a, a pencil and a piece of paper and mark some things down and don't feel like you're dumb because you're doing that. That's what we used to do when we were in school. It's just when we get out of school, all of a sudden it's like, you know, sometimes we think it's wrong to get a piece of paper and pencil and work things out. This is, this is essentially math for musicians. So it's okay to take out a pencil and start writing some things down and, and 
regurgitating that information over and over and over to make it make sense to you and then and then apply it to your guitar so that's that's the one thing i would say for sure yeah guys so hope you enjoyed it hope we got a lot of benefit from it hope you'll join us for the next session if you want to get the master class it's available for you there at guitarzoom.com steve as always my friend it's been a pleasure yes it's been awesome everybody take care and we'll see you again tomorrow thanks guys bye see ya bye